You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated fast. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more, saving you time and money. With Vanta, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, and Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Our listeners can claim a special offer of $1,000 off Vanta at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber for $1,000 off Vanta. The U.S. blood supply is under pressure from a ransomware attack. CrowdStrike shareholders sue the company. There's a critical vulnerability in Bitdefender's Gravity Zone update server. Bingo Mod Rat targets Android users. Hackers use Google Ads to trick users into a fake Google Authenticator app. Western Sydney University confirms a major data breach. Maryland leads the way in gift card scam prevention. NSA is all in on AI. My guest is David Moulton, host of Palo Alto Network's podcast, Threat Vector. And attention marketers, AI isn't the buzzword you think it is. It's Thursday, August 1st, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. Thanks for joining us here again. It is great to have you with us. One of the largest blood centers in the U.S., One Blood is operating at reduced capacity due to a ransomware attack that's disrupted part of its systems. The nonprofit serving healthcare facilities across the southeastern U.S. announced that the attack has impacted their ability to operate efficiently. They've implemented manual processes, which take longer and affect inventory availability, and have urged hospitals to activate critical blood shortage protocols. Despite these challenges, One Blood continues to collect, test, and distribute blood with assistance from cybersecurity experts and federal and state officials. There is an urgent call for O positive, O negative, and platelet donations, although all blood types are needed. The attack on One Blood follows a similar incident in the UK, where the Synovus Pathology Service provider was attacked by the Quilin ransomware gang, severely impacting the National Health Service and leading to the cancellation of critical surgeries and urgent calls for blood donations. South Africa's National Lab Service was also recently attacked, affecting efforts to manage MPOX, HIV, and tuberculosis. CrowdStrike is facing a lawsuit from its shareholders following the disastrous software update that crashed over 8 million computers worldwide. The shareholders accused the cybersecurity firm of making false and misleading statements about its software testing procedures. The incident led to a 32% drop in CrowdStrike's share price, wiping out $25 billion in market value over 12 days. The company has denied the allegations and plans to defend itself in the proposed class action lawsuit. The outage, which began on July 19th, severely affected businesses, including airlines, banks, and hospitals. As of July 29th, CrowdStrike announced that the issues had been resolved. The lawsuit, filed in federal court in Austin, Texas, alleges that executives misled investors about the adequacy of software testing. Delta Airlines reported a $500 million loss due to the disruption and is considering seeking compensation from CrowdStrike. The company blames the incident on a bug in the update process and promises better testing and checks to prevent future problems. A critical vulnerability has been discovered in Bitdefender's Gravity Zone update server, raising significant security concerns. 
The flaw allows server-side request forgery attacks, potentially compromising sensitive data. With a CVSS score of 9.2, the vulnerability is critical, being remotely accessible, requiring high attack complexity and not needing authentication or user interaction. The issue arises from a verbose error handling problem within the server's proxy service, allowing attackers to manipulate server requests and possibly gain unauthorized access. Security researcher Nicholas Verdier identified and reported this vulnerability. Bitdefender has quickly released a fix, urging users to update immediately to prevent exploitation. A newly identified remote access trojan called Bingo Mod is targeting Android users to steal information and facilitate account takeover, according to Cleefy. Unlike known malware families, Bingo Mod enables attackers to initiate unauthorized money transfers by performing on device fraud, bypassing security measures. The malware steals user information such as SMS messages and credentials, performs overlay attacks, and offers remote access via VNC-like functionality. Likely developed by Romanian speakers, it targets devices in English, Romanian, and Italian. Bingo Mod is distributed through smishing, posing as a legitimate antivirus application. Once installed, it requests accessibility services permissions, locking users out while executing its payload. It logs keystrokes, intercepts SMS messages, and allows approximately 40 remote operations. Notably, it can send SMS messages from infected devices to spread further and includes a device wiping feature after fraudulent transactions. The malware is in active development, experimenting with obfuscation techniques to evade detection. Hackers are exploiting Google Ads by impersonating Google to trick users into downloading malware disguised as Google Authenticator from GitHub. According to researchers from Malwarebytes Labs, these malicious ads appear official and verified by Google, targeting users searching for Google Authenticator, a popular multi-factor authentication tool. The ads redirect users to fake websites that offer a malicious authenticator.exe file hosted on GitHub. Once installed, the malware, known as Deer Stealer, exfiltrates personal data. The fraudulent ads show the official Google website but are linked to Larry Marr, a fake account verified by Google. The scam involves multiple redirects through domains controlled by the attackers, eventually leading to the fake authenticator site. Hosting the malware on GitHub allows the threat actors to leverage a trusted platform. The report from Malwarebytes highlights the irony of users being compromised while trying to improve security and advises against downloading software via ads. Australia's Western Sydney University has confirmed a significant data breach with a hacker accessing its Microsoft Office 365 environment and Isilon storage platform. The breach lasted from July 9, 2023 through March 16, 2024, during which 580 terabytes of data were exfiltrated from 83 directories. In January, the university discovered the unauthorized access and notified 7,500 affected individuals. Compromised data included student IDs, personal information, and sensitive workplace details. While no evidence suggests the data has been published or threatened online, the university continues to monitor the dark web for signs of exposure. In a July 31st update, WSU stated there is no indication the breach extends beyond its Office 365 and Isilon environments. Maryland is the first state to pass a law targeting gift card scams with the Gift Card Scams Prevention Act of 2024, signed by Governor Wes Moore. The law requires gift cards sold in stores to be securely packaged to prevent thieves from accessing card numbers. Merchants selling gift cards online must register with the Attorney General's Division of Consumer Protection and train employees to detect fraud. Gift card scams have caused significant losses totaling $228 million in 2023 as thieves drain card balances before returning them to stores. Without secure packaging, gift card funds are vulnerable because thieves can easily access barcodes and pins. 
The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has established a task force to combat this growing issue. Over the past year, over 7,000 NSA analysts have started using generative AI tools for intelligence, cybersecurity, and business workflows, according to Agency Director General Timothy Hogg. The NSA is focusing on a few promising AI projects while encouraging experimentation with others. The agency's AI Security Center has been successful in identifying vulnerabilities in large language models and aims to help smaller companies lacking infrastructure protect their intellectual property. The NSA emphasizes the need for robust AI governance to ensure privacy and compliance. The agency plans to host a conference on AI in national security, stressing AI's impact on future warfare and the importance of protecting critical systems and infrastructure. The NSA is also working with startups to raise awareness about intellectual property theft and advocate for government-wide AI adoption. Coming up after the break, my conversation with David Moulton, host of Palo Alto Network's podcast, Brett Vector. Stay with us. And now, a word from our sponsor, Know Before. Where would InfoSec professionals be without users making security mistakes? Working less than 60 hours per week, maybe. Actually having a weekend every so often. While user behavior can be a challenge, they can also be an InfoSec professional's greatest asset once properly equipped. Users want to do the right thing, but often lack the knowledge to do so. That's one of the reasons Know Before developed Security Coach, a real-time security coaching tool that takes alerts from your existing security stack and sends immediate coaching to users who've taken risky actions. Existing security tools will likely block a user from visiting a high-risk website, for example, but the user might not understand why. Security Coach analyzes these alerts and provides users with relevant security tips via email or Slack, coaching them on why the action they just took was risky. Help users learn from their mistakes and strengthen your organization's security culture with Security Coach. Learn more at knowbefore.com slash security coach. That's knowbefore.com slash security coach. And we thank Know Before for sponsoring our show. The IT world used to be simpler. You only had to secure and manage environments that you controlled. Then came new technologies and new ways to work. Now, employees, apps, and networks are everywhere. This means poor visibility, security gaps, and added risk. That's why Cloudflare created the first-ever connectivity cloud. Visit cloudflare.com to protect your business everywhere you do business. And it is my pleasure to welcome to the show David Moulton. He is the host of Palo Alto Network's podcast, Threat Vector. He is also Director of Thought Leadership at Palo Alto Networks with Unit 42. Dave, it's great to have you here on the show. Good to be back, Dave. Thanks for inviting me in. So Threat Vector has come a long way since your initial uh inception of it here. Can we take a minute and, and sort of go back in time and talk about um, how Threat Vector came to be and that journey from where you originally thought it was going to be and to where it is now, which is a, a weekly podcast all on its own? Sure. So if we go back, we realized that there was an opportunity to talk to audiences about the interesting, unique work that Unit 42 was doing. So whether that was threat research, getting into some of the matters that our incident response team responded to, uh, or even just talking about the threat landscape in general. We wanted to make sure that there was, in fact, 
and appetite for those stories. And that's where we partnered up with you. And we're a segment on CyberWire Daily on Threat Vector Thursdays uh, for about mm-hmm. six months. Got a really strong response from that and thought, well, let's take it into a larger 30 minute, give or take five minutes type of conversation, a deeper interview. And I'll tell you, it's tough to do an interview and get to something of interest in five, six, seven minutes. You can do it. But uh, I think Mark Twain said I would have wrote a shorter letter if I had more time. And that's certainly how the segments felt at times. So we gave ourselves a little bit more room to operate. Now we're looking at Palo as a place that has interesting stories, moving beyond just the edges of Unit 42. We'll certainly have our our experts, those threat researchers, those incident responders coming in. But we wanted to tell some more stories. In addition to that, we wanted to open up the platform to our customers, to SMEs that have interesting stories. If you look at some of the recent things that we've done, they're not all folks that come in and work at Palo Alto Networks every day. Some of them are using our technology, our services. Others just have interesting security stories. And I think that there's room for all of that within Threat Vector and and for our audience. Give me an idea of what happens internally at an organization, the scale of Palo Alto Networks, when you go and say, hey, I want to try this thing out. And then I imagine you go back and you say, you know what, I think we're onto something here. Where does it go from there? So internally, we looked at our numbers. We looked at listens, streams, those sorts of things, pickups on charts, and took those to our leadership. Our CMO is somebody that has a incredible ability to take a look at data, but also has a strong gut. And with the analytics, with the data, and then with the story, I think he could... Uh, you know, sometimes you you work with somebody who knows it when they see it. And he said, let's bet large on this. The challenge then came from our, our CEO. Nikesh is never one to shy away from a challenge. I believe he said, get 100 CISOs on the show before the end of the year. Uh, I haven't. That's mathematically impossible. Right. But, you know, if you're out there listening, know that you could really help me out uh, if you've got a, a CISO title and a great story to tell uh, to show up on Threat Vector. And we'll get into it. You know, this is a place where we'll talk about industry trends, cybersecurity threats, your strategies, impacts from regulators, those sorts of things that are all part of the purview of, uh, of, of security leadership. So you're into this weekly cadence now and you have a a larger palette to tell your stories. You've got more time. What are you looking forward to here as we go out through the rest of this year and beyond? I'm looking forward to bringing some of these incredible stories of our customers onto Threat Vector. I can't reveal the oil and gas company that I've been talking to uh, until it passes their, their legal team. It is inspiring and terrifying to sit down with an IR team and to understand what they face, but then to see the energy and the innovation and the willingness to go beyond any level I had any expectation to see when I sat down with with those customers. And the same for for the customers that have already come on and talked about what they're doing. You know, I think about Gregory Jones and the work that he's doing to protect his university and the man's creativity is is boundless. He's got he's got street signs, road signs out there to educate college students on fishing and to protect them. And I think that 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 gamut of stories and how it impacts our day to day lives is really important. And then to mix that in with the SMEs who can bring uh, a different perspective, a deep uh, expert point of view to life. The point of the show is to educate, to entertain, and to engage. And that's the opportunity that we have in front of us as as a podcast and one that gets me excited every time we light up the mics. Yeah. 
Well, David Moulton is Director of Thought Leadership at Palo Alto Networks with their Unit 42 group, but he is also the host of the Threat Vector podcast, which you can find right here on the N2K Cyberwire Network and wherever you get your favorite podcasts. David, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, David. And now a message from Black Cloak. What's the easiest way for threat actors to bypass your company's cyber defenses? Targeting your executives at home. That's because 87% of executives use personal devices to conduct business, often with zero security measures in place. Once execs leave your organization's secure network, they become easy targets for hijacking, credential theft, and reputational harm. Close the at-home security gap with Black Cloak Concierge Cybersecurity and Privacy, award-winning 24-7, 365 protection for executives and their families. Learn more at blackcloak.io. And finally... I'm not telling you anything you don't already know when I say that suddenly it feels like the entire cybersecurity industry has a bad case of AI fever. And it's not just cyber. Every gadget from your toaster to your toothbrush is boasting about its artificial intelligence features. It sounds cutting edge, but hold your enthusiasm. Because a recent study suggests that consumers are actually getting pretty fed up with this trend. According to research published in the Journal of Hospitality Marketing and Management, mentioning AI in product marketing is becoming a major turnoff. A group of 1,000 respondents showed that products described as using AI were consistently less popular. In fact, when AI was mentioned, emotional trust plummeted, leading to decreased purchase intentions. Take, for example, a smart TV. When described as having artificial intelligence, Consumers reacted with a resounding hard pass. But remove the AI buzzwords, and suddenly the same TV was a hot commodity. Washington State University's Mesut Sisek summed it up, stating, Including AI in descriptions? Bad move, especially for high-risk purchases like electronics or medical devices. And it's not just limited to TVs. The effect was consistent across eight product categories— Even the tech-savvy crowd seems to be rolling their eyes at AI hype. The trend speaks to a broader phenomenon. Gartner noted that the generative AI hype has surpassed its peak of inflated expectations, leaving consumers wary of exaggerated promises and astronomical costs. Despite companies cramming AI into every nook and cranny, from dating apps to car salesmen, buyers are skeptical. Sysak advises marketers to ditch the AI lingo and focus on actual product benefits. Because let's face it, we're all a bit tired of every product pretending it's the next big AI innovation. It's time to drop the buzzwords and keep it real. And that's the Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. Your feedback ensures we deliver the insights that keep you a step ahead in the rapidly changing world of cybersecurity. If you like our show, please share a rating and review in your podcast app. Please also fill out the survey in the show notes or send an email to cyberwire at n2k.com. We're privileged that N2K CyberWire is part of the daily routine of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector. From the Fortune 500 to many of the world's preeminent intelligence and law enforcement agencies. N2K makes it easy for companies to optimize your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your teams while making your teams smarter. Learn how at N2K.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester, with original music and sound design by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producer is Jennifer Iben. Our executive editor is Brandon Karp. Simone Petrella is our president. Peter Kilpie is our publisher. And I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow.
this September 18th and 19th in Denver, a tight community of leading experts is gathering to tackle the toughest cybersecurity challenges we face. It's happening at MWISE, the unique conference built by practitioners for practitioners. Brought to you by Mandiant, now part of Google Cloud, MWISE features one-to-one access with industry experts and fresh insights into the topics that matter most, right now, to frontline practitioners. Register early and save at mwise.io slash cyberwire. That's mwise.io forward slash cyberwire. Cyberwire. 